Unscripted, unrehearsed, welcome to Talking Element. Hi there, welcome to episode three of Talking Element. Thank you for joining us today. Today I'm joined by Judy Lees. Welcome, thanks Thank for you. being here, as well as Aaron, as always. For those who may not know you, can you give a little bit about yourself? I am a GC leader with my husband. Um, I am a co-leader with a great friend of Vicki Berg with Women's Study, a teacher in the kids. Like when to, there's kids. Yes, when there's <laughs> kids. And like to create. So. Very artistic. We appreciate all of that. So thank you very much. Now, before we get into Acts, I actually wanted to talk about our YouVersion Bible plan that we're reading right now as a church. We're going through a 10-day uh, plan, and you can find the link below in the comments if you're interested. Uh, but it, it is focused on prayer. I wanted to ask both of you, can you describe a time where you have grown in your prayer life? Well, um, I would say, I would say right now my prayer life it could be a lot better. Um, I think it's not something that goes steady all the time. Um, I would say that uh, a few months ago, a friend of mine uh, came to me and wanted to start a prayer group. That has really helped me is praying with other people. I find for me, I pray more when things are going bad. Like it's when things are great, I, I thank God. I, my prayers are much more, oh God, wow, that was great. That's amazing. But if I'm going to sit and actually have like a concerted prayer time, it's like I'm getting rid of the distractions. It, the world is melting down. Mm -hmm. Hashtag COVID. And, you know, it's, and that's, that, those are the times that lead me more to prayer. And that's what changes me more than anything. When I have like huge decisions that are hard to make, I, I will typically go and get away from everybody and I do not journal. I, I hate journaling. And probably because I can't read my own handwriting when I go back to look at it again. But I will go and I'll get away from everybody and I will sit down, I will pray and I will listen and I will write things down. And that in my life it really only happens when there's something big and I cannot distinguish God's voice or his leading in something. And yeah, it's usually stuff like that. And that's, that's what tends to change me the most is bad. I don't journal either, but what I do is I talk into my phone. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, jumping into week 26 of Acts, Hasty Words. Um, Aaron, would you mind giving us a brief uh, recap of the message? So the, what we talk about today, is, it's kind of hasty words, but it's really a lot of a stuff that goes along with that. Uh, it's where we're slowing down and looking at two big things that Paul says over the last two weeks. Last week we talked about what Paul says except for these chains. And today it's where Paul appeals to Caesar to take his course, his case all the way to Rome. And at this point you see Paul finally at a place where he realizes how he's going to get to Rome. It's not going to be as a freed person, it's going to be in chains. And so you kind of summarize all the things that Paul has been through through all of his trials. And it is, it is detours with the simple message of his testimony that goes to the place of how God has cleaned up Paul's conscience so he can speak honestly about who he is and who he has been and God's rescue of him. There's so much there that we could, talk, we could dive into. <laughs> Uh, starting with the question you had in the middle of your message, how in your life are you testifying or, or slash bearing witness of God? I want to hear yours first. <laughs> um, it's, I, I think we make it harder than it is typically. And that's, I'm not trying to not answer the question, but I think when people hear this, we, we think, okay, you know, Paul's in prison and he spoke to all these people. And so we're always making this, this big thing. I think it's why for years people handed out tracks at the mall because I got to testify and this is how I got to do it and I've got to step through this. Really, I think it's so much simpler than we make it. I mean, the theology behind the gospel is huge and expansive, but really the message that we give that we are called to give is the message of what God has done in us. And that's what Paul does. We get to speak about, you know, the simple truth of where he has taken us from and where he's moved us to. Before we started this, you know, Judy asked me this question, you know, what are you saved from? Like if a non-Christian, like what does saved even mean? And when you talk about your testimony and bearing witness, you talk about how God saved you from you, 
from your own life and all the stupid decisions you keep making. And he comes and redeems all that stuff so we can have those clear consciences and just speak about our mistakes in a way that doesn't hide them but can simply say, this is where I was, this is where I would have kept going, this is where my natural inclination is to go, but I will testify to the truth that God has rescued me from this, and He has saved me, and I am not the same person I was before, and you can live in hope as well. Okay, on that, what if people think that their lives aren't very bad? Well, so what are they being saved Interesting that you say this. So I read this article I sent Michael today about this. Uh, there's a guy that started duty free, right? Uh, he amasses a fortune of billions of dollars, and he got to a point where he realized I have too much money and too much stuff, and it's not helping me. So he decides by the end of my life I am going to give it all away. And he uh, he's 94 right now, and he just gave it all away at the end of it. So the last $350,000 I gave a grant to some school for some tech research about something or other, so, so it's all gone. And I think, well, that's great. So I Google, you know, is, is he a believer? There's nothing about it being a believer. And so you read the quotes from him, and he says, I did this because it brought meaning to my life. Mm. And so the meaning in his life was giving these things away. So he did this to make himself feel better. Right. And so there's, we're doing these things in our lives to try and give ourselves meaning mm -hmm. because we know without, I think without God, we innately know there is no meaning. And so we're searching for all these things. So he just did all of this. Not that it's not a, right. it, he sh it'd be great to be generous and give away, but yet he did all those things in his life because he was trying to find meaning in this thing. Mm. And now that he's 94, he'll probably die tomorrow or something. And he's going to realize once it's all gone, where's my meaning come from now? Because we're always searching for something. And I think we until, until we find our lives in Christ, we are never going to be able to be subtle because we were created for him and by him and to go back to him. There's a lot of people who don't know and love Jesus who do love others, who do, right. who do bless by giving fortunes away, billions and billions of dollars mm -hmm. this guy did, but there's still a difference. So there's, there's the action that, that might be uh, Christian or not, but then it has to be followed up with the, the why and the heart of it. Mm -hmm. So Gigi, how do you testify in your life? Or where in your life are you testifying? Where am I testifying? Help me out, Mike. Mm -hmm. Get me started. <laughs> Well, that's, that's, that's really interesting, too, because in the notes we have, at, if, if you're having a hard time, ask others to identify in your life. And I think that that is always a, a helpful thing and, and, and good. So where do I see Judy testifying in her life? Well, I, I think you are very neighborly. I, I think you're one of the kindest people I know, and be, that testifies volumes to people around you. you. You bring someone who just had surgery into your home for a couple weeks to take care of somebody. You know, that's, that's something that we should all do as believers, but it's not a normal thing that people do. And it's, it, it's a testament to who you are. I think that is what drives me, is knowing that, that God has done so much for me that I want to reflect Him mm -hmm. better. And that's one way that I can do it. Just going back to the, the final of the, the having a cleared conscience. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, before hearing the message, I'll, I'll think of things that, that I maybe have fixed in life, right? So for me, coming in into this, hearing you give the message, I had read the questions and I, in, in the sermon notes and, and, and the things I thought of were like, for me, weight loss, right? Where now I, now I could have maybe said, I now have a clear conscience because mm. it's a little more evident in my life that I'm not mm. uh, as much turning to something like a substance like food for comfort or peace. Um, but really what I got from the message hearing it was it doesn't matter if I've cleaned that up or not. I should have a clear conscience because God's paid for the, my sin. Mm. God has paid for uh, my sin past, present, and future, which is so good. And so I wanted to kind of end asking about this, like, like, how do you step into 
God's grace in that, 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 that you can have a clear conscience, not that it gives us an excuse to continue sinning or to live in that, uh, but how can we, we be emboldened in the midst of our failure because of God's grace? You know, I, I think it's, it's hard because a lot of people today will say, oh, my conscience doesn't tell me this. Right? And if that's true, the, you know, the scriptures say, well, their consciences have been seared. Mm. You know, and, and I think when our consciences are real, like, I mean, I, I think back to all these horrible things that I did or how I treated people or the things that I said. I still treat people bad sometimes. <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I just think back to, you know, different people and, and different things and and I just start to feel overwhelmed and horrible about it. Like, what, what would somebody think of me doing the job I do now, knowing me from mm. this point in my life? And they would think, he's a liar, you know, that, that guy. And, and I just, and I think, do I need to find these people? Do I need mm. to apologize? And you just get in this huge spiral. And I think when you understand, okay, God has rescued me. He is the one who has spoken, you know, grace over my life. And because he is the one who has done that, I can step forward and live the life he's called me to. We don't run from it, but we don't also stew in it and live mm -hmm. in it. And we just own it and, and move on. And we don't want to be those people anymore. But we can always speak about it. I was like this. And by the grace of God, this is who I am. I think it's probably a lot easier said than done, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of people who do i mean like you said the action is has is changed now for you but i think we can still hold on to that guilt mm -hmm. well it goes back to identity as well mm -hmm. right so like everybody has something they struggle with and then it's like okay and maybe do really well for a while and you don't fall into that thing or don't do whatever that was and all of a sudden boom you do or and you master it and you move on to something else well, let me know when that happens. <laughs> um, and, and then you, and, and you typically you know, fall back in and you're like, why am I never going to change? Why am mm -hmm. I always like that? Mm -hmm. And it all goes to identity. We, and, and, that's, and that's the lie that our identity is this thing. You messed up, therefore you're this. Mm -hmm. And our identity has to come back to being who God has called us to be. We are His children. He has adopted us in, and that's who we are. And... You know, the, so there's this thing of, you know, fact, faith, and feelings. My, the guy that led me to Christ told me this all the time. And he said, you know, he goes, facts should be the locomotive. You know, faith is like the middle car, and then feelings are what come in the end. He said, and too often we're always trying to make the, the caboose, the feelings, the, the things that drive the train. But he goes, a caboose can't pull a train. A caboose should get, get pulled along. He goes, but so often we try and put that first. Hmm. Um, and so what we do is we have to take what are the facts. What has God said over us? What has God done? Who has He called us to be? That's the facts. Even if our feelings are raging against that all the time. You know, Romans 8, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's the fact. We know this because of Jesus' death and resurrection. By faith we come in and we trust that. You know, faith isn't mustering up enough belief. It's saying, I am going to trust what God has said. That's my faith. And then your feelings, once you begin to live like that, eventually your feelings will be drug along behind that. When you live that way, when you say, these are the facts, I'm going to trust what God has said, and my feelings, even though I don't feel it right now, they will eventually come in line when we live what God has called us to live and trust what He said. God's love for me means so much to me. Um, and then that, that in turn changes my actions and changes my view on other people. I think that's only through Christ that has helped me with that. So how ready are, are you now in your life to just speak about anything in your life that has happened? Oh, I can do that. Yeah, because, because it's, it, doesn't, it's, it doesn't define who you are anymore. Because I know what, who my identity right. is. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's the clean conscience. Mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that I don't need to worry or hide myself anymore because my identity comes from Christ himself. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you joining us this evening. Thanks for asking me, Mike. Absolutely. I'm surprised you didn't ask about our detours, but that's too much. Do that in your gospel communities. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Well... Like I said at the beginning, there's too much. And, I mean, we could we could have spent an hour on detours. We could have spent an hour on the simple message, and and I mean, it just 
It's a impactful message. So yes, mm -hmm. spend time talking about it with others, your family, uh, your gospel community. If you need someone to talk to, please reach out and we will try to connect you with somebody to pray with uh, and to kind of flesh out some of this a little bit more in you, especially if you want to understand what it really means to have a clear conscience, that there's things that are good deeds, but then there are things where it's like God's good deeds for us, his glory, um, and that we can live in that despite our wrongness uh, and our sin uh, and the freedom that comes with knowing where our identity truly lies. So please reach out if you want our you know, interesting about that. Yeah. Um, when when Paul says, "For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works," uh, the the word there that is used in the Greek is where we get our word "poem" from. Our word what? Poem from. Poem. Yeah. So we are created kind of to be God's work of art by the things He calls mm. us to do and how He calls us to live. And on that bombshell, we're gonna say <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Was it on that Top bombshell? Gear. Oh, that's right. When Top Gear was good. Sorry, are you are you working on becoming a mechanic now? Yeah. Okay, just checking.